And I'm talking about those situations when you get your opponent off the court, you get them stretched, and they respond with a weak floating shot. So we're gonna show you how to successfully execute swing volleys and approach volleys so you can move forward and take time and space away from your opponent by taking the ball out of the air. Now how can this help you? So very often you may find yourself in a situation where you've built the point, you've got your opponent out of the court, and then they throw the ball up. Now if you let that ball bounce, what happens is you give them time to now recover to get back into position. So pretty much the point goes back to the beginning, back to neutral. So if you have the ability to take the ball out of the air, what's going to happen is you're going to take time away from your opponent. So if they stretch down the corner and you're able to come forward, most likely when you're striking the ball, they're still in that corner and they've given you the entire open court. All right, let's get started by looking at the forehand swing volley in slow motion. Now you'll notice how the left hand, left arm is parallel to the baseline. See how the racket tip is up. Strings are angled slightly downward. Now you're seeing, see as I start to swing up, I swing inside out. It's an upward swing path. And you'll see I'll catch the rack in this instance. That'll just encourage a high finish. Now let's look at that one more time. So we're going to start right here, Aaron. I'm going to have you just stand on the service line and I'm just going to feed the ball to you, pretty stationary, just so you get used to taking the ball out of the air. So you're pretty much hitting very close to normal, normal ground stroke. We prepare, you know, ideal left arm is across um, parallel to the service line, racket is up, and just want to make sure we're swinging up on the ball, really brushing up. Uh, you know, a question Aaron had for us is what happens when you hit a swing volley further inside the court? Do you flatten out? Now you still want to swing up. Even when you get very close to the net, you want to swing up. Very rarely do you swing down in tennis. So if we move on over here, maybe the only time I swing down is if I'm hitting from this position right here. But I could still swing up and still make that shot pretty effectively. Right, so Aaron's starting on the service line. We just want to get him used to taking the ball out of the air, but we're not um, too concerned about his footwork at this point. It's just more about the swing path. He wants to keep lifting the ball focus on swinging upwards all right so keep going here that's it just lifting the ball nicely keep swinging up now one thing that may help you Aaron to swing up and certainly those of you at home is um, if you try to catch the racket with the left hand above your shoulder that may help um, encourage you to swing up on that swing volley because sometimes you're leaving your hand down and then um, you end up not, not lifting the ball, ball as much. So once you hit the next couple, just focus on just catching it and that will help guide the racket upwards, all right? Got it. Okay. All right, here we go. And try to catch the racket over the shoulder. There you go, good. That's a nice high finish, excellent. Good, that's it. Very nice, Aaron. All right, good. Okay, so let's talk about moving forward and hitting the swing volley. And certainly there are a range of different types of footwork. I mean, you can see Roger Federer set up and he even hit some open stance. But I just want to, that's very difficult to um, execute because your shoulders tend to want to open up. So we're going to focus on the two footwork patterns already introduced in the previous modules on, on approach shots and on forcing shots. So one way you can, you can, you can address the ball is you can set up in an open stance that load step like we covered on the high um, short balls and then you can simply transfer your weight forward through the hits right that allows you to move through contact and that's probably going to be a, a footwork pattern you're going to use for higher balls just like we did on, a, on on forcing shots and the other one is the front foot the hit top if the ball is a little bit low you may find yourself setting up in a neutral stance and kind of hopping and then moving forward after the shot you also may find yourself where you just set up and your feet are pretty stationary when you're hitting. That's just going to just, uh, you're going to lose time, time going forward. But when you look at, uh, you know, top pros executing that, they use a range of different kinds of footwork. Let's look at the footwork in slow motion. This is a lower ball, so you'll see I'm more in a neutral stance where my toes are more lined up with one another. Then I'm going to hop off the front foot and then land back on the front foot and that will allow me to transition forward to the net. 
Now let's look at dealing with the higher ball with more of an open stance and then I'm going to drive forward onto my front foot and again I can follow to the net. Okay, now that Aaron's adjusted to um, taking the ball out of the air, we moved him back to the baseline. He's in the starting position, one foot inside the court. Now I'm going to feed the ball. He's going to move forward. Now he's stepping on the front foot. Nice catch with the left hand. And again, he's going to move into the court. Very nice, Aaron. Very nice finish there. See how he catches the racket that encourages an upward finish. Good. All right. Now I'm going to give you a few deeper ones. Okay, there's the open stand, step through. Make sure you still swing upwards. There you go, very nice. There you go, excellent. And see it again. There's the open and then the step through. He's loading the outside leg. Very nice, Aaron. 